Sape satta bhavantu sukhitatta bhavantu sukhitatta This is peaceful. This is excellent. The stilling of all fabrications. The relinquishment of all assets. The destruction of craving. Detachment. Cessation. Nibbana. Hello, I'm Dharmasar Thero, and I'm here with the 25th episode of Nibbana, the secret treasure of the Buddhas. Now, this is the introduction to the second part of this series, the second lecture of the 33 lectures on Nibbana by my mentor, Nyanananda Bhikkhu. So, here I'm going to be summarizing what we've gone over so far and what we plan to cover in this section. If you haven't been with us before, our main concern here is why people are not attaining Nibbana. After all, Nibbana is the goal of the Buddha's teaching. And while the Buddha's teaching is very well known, Nibbana is not well understood. That makes it more difficult for people to approach it. And so they're not attaining enlightenment like they should be. And why is this? We've looked into it. And basically the problem is that religious Buddhism, religious organizations that uh, claim to represent the Buddha's teaching, are not giving the original teaching, but something derived from various commentaries and religious practices that were basically imported from India early in the history of the Sasana in Sri Lanka. What happened was some monks from India came bringing their own ideas, their own ways of commenting on the suttas, and their own practices from Hinduism. And they more or less covered over the original teaching of the Buddha with those teachings. So we have some confusion about what the teaching of the Buddha actually is. And more than that, there was a second reformation, or whatever you want to call it, a second wave of changes that were introduced by the British. When the British were colonially occupying Sri Lanka. They wanted to harmonize Buddhism with Christianity. So they introduced various ideas that basically uh, separated the monastic life and the temple life from the everyday life of the people. And so they introduced practices like Buddhist schools and so on that gradually uh, set people apart from the monastics and greatly diminished the influence that the monks had over the everyday life of the people. So uh, this has progressed to a situation now where even monks are getting involved in politics, which is nuts. <laughs> it's not what a monk should do. A monk should meditate and attain enlightenment and then teach and help others. But because they have changed the original teaching, it's not at all clear that this is actually against the Buddha's instructions. The subjective impact of these changes in the Buddha's teaching has been to make it seem like Nibbana is something far away, something that nobody can attain in this lifetime, that will require many lifetimes of collecting merit and so on to be able to even get close to it. But actually, is this the case? When we read the original teaching of the Buddha in the suttas, we find that once a student or a monk got a meditation process from the Buddha, he went off alone, not in a group, not in a class, not in an organized meditation retreat at a temple, but he went off alone in the forest and applied the Buddha's methods until he got the result. And usually this didn't take very long. In fact, the words, 
He attained this Nibbana in no long time, are found again and again in the suttas. So what does it mean? It means that once a person has right view, once they understand the teaching of the Buddha properly, applying it is not such a big deal. It shouldn't take years and years and years. It should take a matter of days or weeks. There are many instances where people attained enlightenment right in front of the Buddha listening to his discourses. So it shouldn't be a matter of years and years, what to speak of lifetimes. A person should be able to attain Nibbana within 120 days at the most, if they have the right background. So our effort in this series is to provide that background and to fill in the context that you need to understand the suttas so that you can apply them and get the benefit. What usually gets in the way of people getting right view? Well, they usually claim time is the problem. I don't have time to read through all of the suttas. And actually, there are thousands of suttas. And if you read them one after the other, it might take a couple of years. When I was a monk in Sri Lanka, I read through all the suttas, all the three major baskets of the suttas, the Tipitaka or Tripitaka, as it's called. It took me about two years, two and a half years. And at the same time, of course, I was trying to realize them in practice. So it is difficult to read through all the suttas. But is it really required to get the right view? I don't think so. Personally, my own experience is I attained stream entry after a concentrated effort of less than 100 days, about 90 days. So what was required was more like actual practice, concentrated practice, being alone, not doing anything else, but sitting down and meditating as much as possible with no interruptions. This was in the days before the internet and cell phones and all of this. So I was able to get six weeks of solid practice with no interruptions. And very easily, or compared to people who spend years and years meditating, I uh, attained something very satisfying. So you can too. I'm not any kind of special person. I'm not any kind of genius or anything like that. But I do have one thing going for me that most people don't, which is my connection with a realized soul by discipleship. Discipleship is probably the most powerful tool that we have for realizing the Buddhist teaching. And anyone can do this. Anyone can become a disciple. It's more a matter of your attitude than it is of the person you're following. <laughs> I follow Bhikkhu Nyanananda because as far as I can tell, he's a realized person. And also he is very articulate in the English language. So he made it possible for me to understand Nibbana properly. As soon as I got that right view, it didn't take very long at all to realize it. So the problem is people are unable to get right view. They're unable to understand the Buddhist teaching as it is because they have been confused by the commentaries and summaries like Vishuddhimagga. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of good things in Vishuddhimagga and I benefited from reading it. But there are a lot of things in there that are actually contrary to the Buddha's teaching. And so you have to know which is which. You have to be able to read it critically. And most people don't have the background of knowledge. So it's better to adopt the sutanta attitude. The sutanta means a follower of the suttas. And simply concentrate your studies on the original Buddha suttas. And then you can't go wrong. So if you do this, you'll find there are hundreds of methods, hundreds of ways to approach enlightenment. And if you follow any one of them to its conclusion, then you will certainly attain. 
Now, a word about practice. A lot of people want to find a simplified method, a system, which takes one method and follows it all the way to the end. And I'm here to tell you that that's not going to work. Because as your mind becomes purified, as you become more and more concentrated, as you get closer and closer to the actual Nibbana, things change. Your point of view will change. Your consciousness will change. Everything will change. <laughs> and you'll get opportunities to go into states that are unexplored, that are unknown for which you have no map. And this can be very scary. But let me tell you something. Nothing in those spaces can hurt you. Nothing can harm you. After all, it's all going on in your own mind. So there's no way that you can be hurt by exploring the unknown within. In fact, unless you do this, unless you go in and experience something unheard of, unknown, unexplained, inexplicable, uh, there's no way you can attain Nibbana, because that's where Nibbana is found, in the unexplainable, the unknowable, the imperceptible, which is within and beyond everything. So this is one point. Another point is that you have to practice very intensively. Ultimately, you have to be in meditation 24 hours a day. You can do this by practicing with discipline and by excluding all distractions, being in solitary mode, away from all kinds of people, even so-called religious people or Buddhist people, and just going into the truth and experiencing it for yourself all by yourself. Now, if you have right view, there's absolutely no danger in this of going astray. If you understand Nibbana, or I mean as much as Nibbana can be understood, <laughs> if you can understand the symptoms of Nibbana, and especially what Nibbana is not, then you can very easily advance in your practice until you actually attain realization. Now, another point is that the Buddha was teaching people whose cultural background was the Vedas, the sacred writings of India. So many of the points that he explains in his suttas are based on themes that are well known in the Vedas. But of course, they're not well known at all in the West. So another thing that we're doing here is we're trying to introduce this Vedic background, not directly, but in the way that we present the Buddha's teaching. So that's another aspect. And there's one more thing I wanted to cover in this introduction. Dependent origination or dependent arising, paticca samupadda. So what is this process of dependent origination? It is the process of becoming. It is how being and becoming lead to our manifestation in this world. And that, of course, ends in suffering. Because the, the cause of death is birth. And the cause of birth is becoming. And the Buddha analyzed this all the way back to its origin. So it's not that the process of birth and death happens only in an entire lifetime. That's a misinterpretation of Paticca Samuppada. Of course, each lifetime is a cycle of birth and death. But actually, Paticca Samuppada, the process of becoming, is going on every moment. Every moment we are entering into a fabrication which produces consciousness, which produces a name and form, six sense basis, contact, feelings, clinging, craving, becoming, birth, and ultimately death. This is going on every moment, actually many times a second. With each impression or with each sense input, 
that we get from all of our senses. We are going through a little mini process of becoming. And when these all add up together, we have our state of being. So the aim of the Buddha's teaching is to stop this process of becoming, to stop the cycle of birth and death. And how do we do it? We actually create another cycle of becoming, but a very special one that leads to the end of becoming. And that's called the Noble Eightfold Path. Now, this Noble Eightfold Path begins from right view. If we don't have the right view, if we don't have the correct understanding of the Buddha's teaching, we can't get realization. So what has been happening is that many counterfeit teachings being presented as the Buddha's teaching, as Buddhism, have confused and covered up our understanding of the Buddha's actual teaching. And because of this, it's been very, very difficult, more and more difficult, for people to attain enlightenment. So, in the interest of helping people to get the full benefit of the Buddha's teaching, we want to try to clear away these misunderstandings and bring out the original form and intent of the Buddha's teaching, which is, of course, to attain enlightenment, nibbana, freedom from becoming, freedom from suffering, so many other things, the ultimate refuge. So by spreading this knowledge, we hope to make it possible for more and more people to attain nibbana in an easy, quick, and natural way. It doesn't require years and years of study. It doesn't require a lifetime or even many lifetimes of practice. Of course, it can. <laughs> but once you get it, once you understand Nibbana properly, it's only a matter of a few weeks before you can experience it directly for yourself. So that's what we're offering here. That's what we're suggesting here. That with the right view, with the right understanding of the Buddha's teaching, it's possible to accelerate our spiritual progress and attain enlightenment in just a few weeks and actually taste this Nibbana for ourselves. Sabbe Sattā Bhavantu Sukhi Tattā Bhavantu Sukhi Tattā